Hey everyone, we have Abhilash Dasari here. He's the founder of smartner.in, uh, which is a tech startup uh, which does smart home automation. Uh, he has a sophisticated yet simple technology that he brings to the Indian home buyer. Uh, his mission statement is uh, not just a dream home, but dream smart homes. So uh, welcome Abhilash and uh, looking forward to hear from you, your entrepreneurial journey, how you went from being uh, a Canada Bank security officer and, and to now being an entrepreneur that you are right now. So uh, all yours to uh, listen to your story. Yeah, I do. Uh, it's uh, nice connecting with you. So sure. yeah, uh, the last, this is the sixth year uh, we are uh, building smart homes all across India. Okay. And uh, of course I was, uh, I mean, this is definitely my uh, first uh, entrepreneurial uh, uh, mission, I would say. Uh, okay. After that, I've been involved with uh, quite a few um, other ventures as well as we grew. Uh, I started as a, an electronics engineer. Right. I also right. did my uh, flight training uh, okay. in the U.S. I have my uh, pilot's licenses both in the U.S. and uh, here. Oh, in wow. India. okay. And then... Uh, that was around uh, 2008. Uh, you know the the recession right. uh, uh, yeah. because of which the airline couldn't get back on uh, on track for the at least the next three four years. So uh, right. a lot of people like me who had their licenses, they were looking for other avenues, and uh, that's when um, uh, one of my other passion was uh, apart from aviation, which is uh, was uh, the stock markets. I did oh. a master's in. Uh, uh, financial. Uh, I did a master's in uh, stock markets. Basically, it's okay. a, a institute uh, called the National Institute of Securities Markets. Yes, it's okay. a institute uh, 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 organized by uh, SEBI. I would say, which is the right. market regulator for all the uh, yes, absolutely uh, financial financial markets. Right, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, I that's when I ended up in uh, Canada Bank uh, as a as an officer okay. in the securities division of Canada Bank. I okay. I, I found it interesting. I was uh, based out of Hyderabad, uh, based out of Bangalore at the time, and okay. I was um, quite a few uh, high net worth individual uh, uh, portfolios. Uh, okay. Uh, learning at the same time, I was giving some. Uh, uh, I also had a lot of uh, certifications related to uh, the stock markets in India. And then I also did my uh, level one in CFA. I know it's okay. like all over the place. But <laughs> then uh, there was always yeah. this thing. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to do something um, close to my heart, like uh, something that I was passionate about. So technology was uh, my go-to thing. Uh, I was okay. always, almost uh, all the time into all the latest gadgets and stuff. So... Uh, while I was uh, working as a stock with the stockbroking firm, I was uh, uh, so in fact, in a way, that was my first job. So okay. I was spending most of my money uh, on all these gadgets, and uh, my wife used to get mad about it. Uh, okay. So I was okay. importing all this stuff from the US, and uh, who, whichever friend was coming, I used okay. to ask them for all these latest gadgets. And uh, okay. I started uh, building this uh, a home. Uh, Okay. At the time, we didn't know we can we could call it a smart home. Of course, now it's something that everyone does. Uh, right. It was more like a like I used to call it a smart home, something like a, like it was like a show home for me. Uh, all my friends used to be excited. Like uh, uh, the Alexa was uh, the first Alexa device was launched in the US somewhere about uh, 2016 uh, period. And okay, uh, I got it. I got it imported to the uh, from the US uh, for about two hundred dollars, which is uh, approximately okay. at the time was almost a considerable uh, part of my salary. I would say. Okay. So, and um, the first time I gave a voice command and I like, turned off the light, so in fact a light turned on uh, for me. Okay. Uh, right. So, right. That's how the journey started. And, okay. And um, so. It's been got it. Uh, so I, I so really eight years now. Okay, okay. Since that on, and uh, we've been doing this uh, ever since. 
Okay. I, I really gather a lot of, you know, learning appetite from, from what you just said. Like you started off being like a pilot, uh, pilot and then stock working and then technology and now <laughs> and entrepreneurship. It's, it's amazing that you have that appetite to learn so much and, and in progress in every area that you can uh, put your hands on. I would call myself more uh, inquisitive. Of course, right. I still uh, try to learn a lot many uh, more things. Uh, okay. So I've been inquisitive all my life. <laughs> right. I think that's a great quality to have, especially when you're an entrepreneur, you want to uh, improve your processes and product uh, and also uh, your marketing. So uh, amazing uh, appetite you have. So uh, Abhilash, you said you were like a, working for a stock rookie and that was your passion. Uh, so how did that transition? I know you said you bought a lot, lot of stuff for yourself and then uh, you, you saw that uh, power of technology in your uh, home uh, as well. And that how did you say, okay, uh, I'm going to start something on my own uh, and quit my job and then do something for uh, the Indian consumers? How did that uh, idea, uh, you know, to venture into entrepreneurship uh, come into picture? So uh, I was managing uh, quite a few h &I portfolios. So okay. I saw that there was growth, but uh, uh, people who are invested, uh, they already had that uh, money and they are investing and growing that amount, right? But right. Uh, I started, when I started to, uh, you know, do some investing, it I could hardly invest anything from uh, whatever was left out of uh, uh, after all the expenses, I could hardly right. save anything from the job that I was doing as a stockbroker. Right. And that's when I realized that I'm not creating wealth. I'm just uh, facilitating to create wealth. Right. And uh, of course, I didn't have, uh, like, uh, maybe I, retrospectively, I'm uh, saying this. At that time, I was like, uh, I think I can do something better. I have to do something better with my uh, time. Like, you know, okay. uh, I'm not able to, I would say, uh, uh, leverage. Uh, would be the right term, I would say, because I'm working for, for, for let's say, eight hours a day, and I'm only getting paid for, like, the eight hours. Right. So at some point, the uh, uh, stock markets has uh, taught me a lot, in fact. So when you talk about the basic equity, which is uh, investing into stocks, you just uh, buy some stocks and you keep it. There, There's no leverage. You just wait for it uh, over a long right. over a period of time. Uh, when you stay invested, that's when uh, the power of compounding kicks in. Yeah. But there are also a little more invest, uh, uh, riskier uh, investment, such as the derivatives, where there okay. is a concept called futures and options. Of course, yeah. this might be technical for a, a few of your uh, yeah. uh, uh, viewers, maybe, but uh, the futures and options uh, was something that I was uh, very uh, good at, uh, oh, okay. uh, at understanding. You know, mm -hmm. So... I used to, uh, uh, so that's where I got to know the power of uh, compounding or the leverage or the gearing, right? So why does, uh, with the same RPM, why is the car run in the fifth gear going faster versus the first gear? So I knew instantly, yeah. not instantly, maybe about after three years of working in this sector, I, I realized that I have to do something on my own. Uh, okay. It has to be... Uh, uh, that's something that motivated me to start something. I spoke to a few of my friends, also pilots, and they okay. were also very, uh, uh, very excited about uh, when I. So because they used to visit my home and like uh, they said, why don't you do it as a as a as a business? And uh, okay. that's what caught my attention. And um, and I got a few of my co-founders. Uh, okay, said that they're uh, willing to support me and. Uh, that's about six years ago. So that's okay. Business, please. Amazing. Yeah. So uh, I think you already had built that skill of, uh, you know, even though you didn't have the capital at that point, you had the skill to generate more capital had you got more uh, investment. Uh, so I think that really had that, uh, you know, had you in a cushion uh, state of mind that whatever happens, if I get some capital, I can still survive uh, with the skill that you have in, in derivative uh, market. Um, is that how skill, you... Yeah, so partly skill. Uh, I would not want to uh, uh, take the full credit for that. It's also partly networking, I would say. Okay. Uh, because uh, when I spoke, when I spoke to uh, just the first uh, two or three of my friends, all of them were on board. So okay, 
uh, I mean, we, we didn't even raise uh, that big of a capital, in fact. Okay. Our, uh, very, the very first round, or in fact, the seed capital was about uh, 30, 40 lakh rupees. Okay. And uh, today we are valued uh, close to 4 million uh, USD. So, okay. Um, Amazing. And growing, and growing fast. So, very, very awesome journey. I mean, uh, from a seed capital of 30 lakhs, and now you are like 4 million USD. It's in, in, in just six years. That's what he said, right? So, how, been, how did that exciting yes right so when you reached out to uh you know potential partners who uh, so how did that conversation go were there people who, uh, were there people who already uh, knew your passion for entrepreneurship or is it something that you thought uh they could be a value addition to your uh stream of business so far, I would say uh, we have only reached out to the angel networks. So we haven't yet raised uh, uh, from the uh, the VCs. So we are uh, okay. ready for a VC round uh, pretty soon. Uh, okay. Um, however, uh, most of our uh, so it's been the very seed capital was very close friends of mine, and then uh, we reached out to together. We reached out to friends. Uh, and friends of friends and also some members in the family and okay. uh, we did is uh, uh, so we didn't raise a lot of money initially uh, of course uh, there is a uh, there is a downside to it because when you keep diluting uh, i mean this is for the would be entrepreneurs right so you right. also have to understand uh, what is the ask like you can you should not end up asking too low or, at the same time, you cannot ask too high. Uh, you have to okay. value it. It's it's always a it's a it's always a dilemma. But uh, yeah. I mean, for us, it was easy because uh, um, we were just trying to uh, create value. We wanted everyone who is uh, uh, coming in in uh, you know the next round. We wanted them to see the value in us. So so okay. far, we did like about three small rounds of funding, and everyone is. Uh, uh seeing value that we have created so okay as i said now we are in a position where we can uh, confidently go ask a vc like uh you know right uh, we have uh, about uh, 10 million of uh, uh revenue revenue coming in in the next uh, three to four years so we are looking okay. for a five or six million uh, uh valuation so okay okay amazing uh, Abhilash, when you started off, uh, I know you talked about co-founders, you added them. And then how did that prototyping go for your product? Uh, did you have like a team of experts who uh, advised you on how the product ideation uh, phase should go? Or you had your own ideas on that? Uh, our, uh, so that's where we differ from a, a typical product company. So mm -hmm. we are more of a system integrators where uh, we are... Uh, we were in fact in the business we wanted to create a product which we wanted to sell and mm -hmm. uh, we did do some prototyping uh, in the very initial uh, stages and okay. when uh, we started comparing, doing a comparative analysis we, we started comparing the product that we have in hand with uh, the products that uh, um, uh, that the competition had so okay. uh, particularly from uh, countries such as China and you know, Taiwan Mainly, this is electronics, right? So they have uh, uh, a lot of superiority, and uh, so we noticed that we cannot either create the product at at that level of quality with the funds that we have, or we cannot create the that quality with the funds, or you know the other way around. I would say uh, we'll end up paying a lot more. Or we can, with the same funds, we'll have a very inferior product. So okay. So uh, it doesn't make sense for me. If I know that my product is inferior, uh, mm -hmm. I'm not, I'll not go sell it in the market. So right. that's when we started doing the analysis of what are all the products that are available in the market. And uh, we were blown away, in fact. There were okay. hundreds of products hitting the market every single, uh, every single week. Mm -hmm. It was uh, very difficult for us to just keep track of what are all the products that are there in this. Uh, it's, right. it's a very niche segment, by the way. Mm -hmm. Smart homes is, it was just catching up. Hardly anyone knew what it was, of course. At the time, uh, then came the small video doorbells, like the ring doorbells, and now Alexa's, and 
they're uh, pretty much in every home. So, um, so when you when you try to compare the product, then we realize that product is may not be the right approach. We want we then start shifted our focus to the uh, the experience, the user experience, because okay, very quickly we realize there are amazing products out there, but uh, somehow they are not reaching the uh, the intended uh, uh, audience. Product. Audience, yes. Okay. So then we, we realized that, okay, why don't we focus on, we started testing hundreds of products. Then uh, we shortlisted the products that we liked and uh, we created some portfolio baskets of uh, products uh, in various, uh, like, you know, for uh, high-end uh, homes, for uh, budget homes and everything in the middle. So that's how okay. we create, curated these um, smart home experiences. And uh, till date, we did more than... Uh, uh, close to, uh, we are very close to uh, delivering our 300 uh, smart home. Oh, okay. That's on, on the okay. B2C side. And on the B2B, we have a very strong order pipeline as well. Okay. Okay. Got it. So, uh, if you talk about your smart home product, uh, what are the key I'm highlights? Thinking, uh, someone is at the door. Yeah, sure. sure. So, I just have. <laughs> okay. So, while we're speaking, someone. It's my wife at the door, so I just had to unlock it. So oh 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 yeah, showing okay, amazing. The smart smart home system is already in play. <laughs> wow. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I was going to ask you the same. Uh, like, uh, what are the key uh, features that uh, is most uh, valued by your customers for your uh, smart home uh, automation? There are, if you ask me, I have like at least uh, seven or eight features that I am personally, I'm excited. At okay. the same time, uh, uh, with the customers, what happens is, uh, um, again, as I said, since it's a very niche segment, we are mm -hmm. imparting the knowledge. Like we are uh, uh, telling them what a smart home is. So we have okay. a, a, an experience a studio in, a, in an upscale mall in Hyderabad where people just walk in and uh, have a experience of what a smart home is all about. And okay. um, so some people are excited that uh, it, it's uh, it's convenient. Uh, so people, all, people are also of different types, right? Some are very sophisticated, some are very tech savvy, some not so much. So right. it's again a very, uh, every home that we have delivered so far has been, a very very highly customized uh, experience okay. i would say so some people like the security aspect of it mm -hmm. um, so like I, I just said uh, wherever I'm, uh, i am right. over, i can just unlock the door uh, and right. it also has uh, and i also have the peace of mind like you know i'm looking at who is at the door and I, in the same screen i can unlock the door so oh, that's uh, that's something that maybe Maybe less than one percent of people are using today, but mm -hmm. uh, I going forward, I think at least uh, even if it is like 20, 30 percent of the population, it will be very hard for us to catch up, you know, for, uh, to the demand. Right. So, okay. Yeah, so Sorry. that's one part: uh, the security, uh, the convenience. So we have something called uh, the scenes, like uh, you know, uh, when you say, um, uh, "Hey Siri, turn off all the lights." Okay, so that's a typical uh, command. So, uh, so it's turn off the lights oh, here, actually. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Uh, turn on all the lights. So that's oh. it, it's okay. getting to that uh, easy uh, mm -hmm. ease of operations, and uh, it's going to be pretty much everywhere. Uh, right. We are right. maybe a few uh, years ahead, but uh, that's what makes it uh, more exciting right so, i think i think in the developed countries it's it's very normal and in here it's just like uh the eruption phase is going on and uh will catch up soon is that how you look at it i i differ i differ with that somehow okay. because i traveled to the US and uh, i've been uh, traveling i in fact i traveled to about 23 countries in the last uh, uh maybe 10 years and uh, okay uh my experience differs from what you're saying. In fact, Indians are more tech savvy. Even if I go to the okay. US, uh, the Desi community is uh, more tech savvy and they have their uh, home smarter and 
not the, uh, the other. I didn't see other communities uh, ca catching up that much. Of course, okay, it is uh, everywhere right now. I mean, uh, uh, the kind of smart homes that we are delivering here in India, the budgets here are huge. Like people okay. are spending left and right on their new homes. Oh, and okay. um, so we have a lot more uh, 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 wiggle room, I would say, to build more uh, sophisticated smart homes here in India and not uh, in the in the Western countries. Okay. okay. Uh, in Western countries also, there's another uh, uh, aspect of looking at it because they are more like, you know, um, hands on themselves. They would like to do do it like there is this DIY culture there. Uh, so yeah. they're the product off the shelf. They don't need a lot of, uh, uh, you know, the technical uh, uh, support or uh, the installation support per se. Uh, right. Whereas here, uh, whereas still people try to delay. Even if you're a tech savvy, you would still want someone to fix your... Uh, uh, I mean, your lights or <laughs> door yeah. lights or whatever it is. Absolutely. Yeah, got it. Okay, so uh, Abhilash, when you uh, said that Indian market is is very hot for this kind of uh, product, uh, how did you go about doing your ma marketing strategy? Uh, did you go online e-commerce or uh, the retail store route? So the first 10 to 15 customers, uh, of course, which is the, again, the most difficult ones were mostly within our network, our okay. friends or friends of friends or relatives. And okay. uh, that's where we were able to uh, showcase or uh, we could demonstrate the proof of concept. Okay. You know, we were not even a business then, we were just an idea. SmartNet was uh, just an idea in our, one of our right. uh, uh, heads. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, once we did the first one, we were like, okay, I think this is going to work. Then we did five and we were like pretty confident. We started with the incorporation and stuff parallelly. And then okay. uh, by the time we were doing our 10th smart home, uh, like uh, it was probably the first year we only did about 13, if I remember it right. So, okay. but that was the most exciting. Like we right. personally, uh, we were uh, we were doing the operations. We were taking care of everything. Like we were filling multiple shoes. Uh, right. So... Uh, the CEO has to do uh, the installation of a smart uh, security camera, climbing up the ladder. <laughs> and, you know. Yeah. So yes. startups, you go all over the place. And uh, even okay. today, in fact, so we have a, an operations team and uh, the whole team is about uh, 17, 18 post uh, COVID. We were okay. uh, uh, a much bigger team pre COVID, but uh, we had to, uh, uh, for operational reasons, we had to cut, cut some costs and, uh, we tried to stay afloat at the time. Of course, it was a difficult period for a lot of us, but very quickly the demand picked it, picked up, and okay. now we are uh, pretty decent uh, there. And okay. um, yeah, so the first thirteen homes, as I said, in the year one, then the second year we did thirty homes. Third year we are building okay. about seventy eighty. Uh, okay. Close to seventy eighty. So oh, it's a Amazing. gradual uh, uh, progression. Yeah. Amazing progression. So. So I'm curious to know, like, when you did uh, only like 13 or whatever number, uh, you did very little number in the first year and also in the second year. How did you say that I'm going to stay with this for the long term and, and you don't necessarily see the results that you have hoped for? Uh, how did that uh, perseverance and, and the grit come in, uh, in in your mind to stay with, uh, with it? So whenever we used to deliver a smart home, we were seeing uh, when we deliver a home, we were seeing the wow factor the customers were very excited when we give a demo yeah. and then they were very excited in fact we were getting referrals from our customers because uh, they were showing uh, showcasing uh, what we did to their friends and family you know a new home people want to uh, you know bring in uh, family and friends and uh, so the word was uh, spreading quickly and that way okay. we are getting uh, the business as well i mean one satisfied customer is your best best brand ambassador right, right? so yeah uh, we are also focusing uh, a lot more on the so the whole idea is the our business model is more focused on the experience rather than the product itself okay so for some reason uh, a particular uh, brand or a particular product is failing we also have a couple of alternatives so we are immediately uh you know taking it off our product offering and then bringing introducing something better and of course okay. as Technology is always progressing, right? So, uh, right. in fact, we are using the fifth generation of some of the uh, 
products in the last uh, in six years. So there are a few products like like iPhone, right? An iPhone comes up, uh, hits the market every year. So all most electronics also have that uh, phased uh, uh, product cycle. So okay. we always are regularly in touch with customers. We also have the something called the annual maintenance contracts where uh, we uh, share update product upgrades and you know referral bonuses and all that to keep the. Okay. Uh, we need to maintain that us. So that way we are keeping that uh, interest. And uh, I think uh, having a constant connect with customers is pretty important. Right. And I also believe personally that rather than um, channeling all your uh, uh, efforts on the sales or marketing aspect, uh, service has... Having an opportunity to service your existing customers will bring you more business. That's out of my own experience again. Got it. So when a customer calls any of our uh, team, so I would I would tell them like you know that's an opportunity for us to delight the customer and uh, in right. turn uh, look for uh, more business. So right. I I really like that line that you said. Uh, One happy customer is your best friend. So, uh, and then you keep servicing them to the best of your ability and then they just uh, keep on bringing uh, more uh, repeat business and also referrals and then you organically. So your question again was more about uh, what's the marketing strategies and all. So, right. I mean, there were these traditional marketing strategies, but now I think I believe the traditional marketing strategies is more like uh, the uh, Google ads or, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, right. Please, these yeah. are the facebook ads social media marketing and all so most right. companies still have to do that you have to sometimes you do something which goes viral and then uh, there's your uh, uh, marketing yeah uh, it's going to pay pay off very pretty well for you and uh, but that's you have to depend on certain things all the time uh, you also have to be current again uh, you have right. to know where the trend is going so um keeping ourselves current is like that's how i get to travel a lot i i visit okay. these uh, trade shows all the okay. uh, uh, so there is this uh, show called the consumer electronic show which happens in vegas every beginning of every year so okay. uh, every time i visit there uh, the show blows my mind away because uh, okay. uh, i see stuff which is like three or four years ahead of time like okay. know, it's, it's crazy um, we, are, we have seen, we have seen um, the air taxis. Uh, we have seen the uh, robotic kitchen arms, which is preparing okay. pasta for you. And wow! <laughs> so and nice. that's going to be reality, believe me. And on the smart home uh, segment, I have seen that like two three years ago. Now the products are already hitting the market. So okay, staying current is very, very important, mainly okay. important mainly for the uh, ecosystem. I would be, I would say. So you constantly upgrade the product and and uh, focus on giving personalized uh, solutions to each customer, and then that creates the delight and wow factor uh, with your existing customers. Correct. Okay. That's correct. Amazing. It's a lot of lot of value from uh, your experience that um, our viewers are gathering, including me. <laughs> So Abhilaj, one last question: uh, Do you still do uh, like derivatives uh, trading in, in the stock market, or is it something that you have uh, done away with? Uh, honestly, I don't get a lot of time to uh, right. uh, um, monitor the markets as such. Okay. But uh, again, uh, I am someone who believes in uh, uh, not in speculative trades. I I believe yeah. in. Uh, if someone wants to create wealth, it has to be a, a systematic effort over a period of time. It has to be um, a long-term wealth creation always happens with uh, systematic investments over a period of time. Right. Equities will definitely uh, do. With equities, you have a lot of flexibility, be it equities, be it uh, even derivatives. Derivatives is, again, right. it's a very sophisticated uh, um, and a very powerful uh, tool. It's not for everyone. It's it's it was meant to be uh, for hedging against yeah. risks. But uh, so derivatives were in fact uh, the very oldest derivatives. I don't know if you have enough time. But the how derivatives evolved, I would uh, tell you, because uh, 
uh, it was more like uh, someone who was producing a wheat and uh, uh, there's the the bakery uh, who, mm -hmm. who wants the wheat in time to make the fresh loaf of bread and deliver it to the market right so there right. was this risk like you know if there is a bad uh, weather so the cost of wheat goes up but uh, it's a risk for uh, so that's when they started doing the forward contracts and right, and it right. slowly evolved for a period of time and now derivatives uh, whoever is not the uh, the baker or who doesn't own a bakery is uh, directly uh, investing in the futures and the forward contracts right. or the options in the week so uh, it's more of a speculative trade of course uh, um, uh, so those are also called uh, naked uh, uh, derivatives uh, if you are hedging your portfolio, it is still a very good tool for you at a at a very nominal cost. It's more like an insurance. Right, uh, right. It's uh, it'll safeguard your portfolio from a uh, huge downsides like you know COVID, a uh, lot of uh, yep. two thousand eight stock market crashes. It uh, even uh, even as recently as uh, twenty, the particularly the U.S. stock markets were at all time high, and now they have corrected to about 40, 50 percent levels. Right. means 50 percent of the wealth investor wealth has uh like, right know, so, yeah but derivatives again very sophisticated unless you have all the right tools i would not recommend it uh, Got i don't know i mean uh, we're we, we not even uh, uh supposed to give a financial advice per se uh, <laughs> as such i got yeah. the latest Sebi, no, I, I was I was more curious in terms of your own business. Uh, I'm sure you will have like uh, investments uh, for your business as well. So, you, do you hedge positions for your uh, commodities uh, within your business, or is that something that uh, you give away to the experts? We're not using uh, so electronics. It's not a very typical commodity business uh, right. here. Uh, rather than having the product on time. It's also having the wrong product is even more riskier because the product right. will become obsolete soon. Very fast. Like, you know, yeah. if you have if you have like iPhone tens, a bunch of iPhone tens now, what are you going to do with them? Right. It's now fifteen, and so yeah. that's how you have to be pretty careful with uh, what you bet on, uh, right. particularly in the uh, stock markets. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Amazing. Thank you so much, Abhilash. Uh, amazing talking to you and, and deriving you from you your uh, lessons learned. And uh, the journey itself is very inspiring and a lot of value that uh, we have received uh, through this interaction. So, uh, so uh, Abhilash, uh, as a closing comment, do you have any advice uh, that you want to give to entrepreneurs who want to uh, you know, start afresh? Uh, it's definitely not a bed of roses. It is right. glamorous for some, but um, uh, you will be doing a lot of firefighting mm -hmm. uh, in the initial uh, few years until you have like uh, stable revenue streams. You're, okay. you're constantly fighting with your investors, your employees, your co-founders, right. your suppliers, your customers. It's uh, it's a it's something that you will be doing on a very regular basis. In fact, sometimes more on a daily basis. So unless right. you are prepared to do something like that, um, I don't know if uh, um, yeah. it's definitely a very, very exciting journey. Uh, for me personally, it's been uh, very uh, rewarding as well. Yeah. Uh, and I see the upside now. Uh, if you had asked me five years mm -hmm. ago, I would I would not, uh, I would have taken where, wherever I am Today, I would have taken it in a jiffy, like, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't I have believed myself if someone said, right. okay, in, in five years, if you do this, you're going to be there. But of course, as and when we uh, started climbing the st steps, even our, uh, uh, our uh, we are setting sights on uh, bigger targets now, bigger revenues. And uh, so yep. uh, it's an exciting journey. Uh, if you have uh, the... I would not use the word knack, but I would say if you have, uh, uh, um, if you are up for some challenges, definitely uh, you should take. A, in fact, I would I would say everyone should uh, take up some gigs in uh, or you know something in an, uh, like a an entrepreneurial journey. I I wish everyone has some experience uh, at least maybe just for a few years, maybe as a co-founder 
or at least try helping out some of the uh, entrepreneurs out there and try to understand their journeys because uh, it's it's it teaches you a lot uh, it also supports the the uh, the community uh, it yeah. creates a lot of lot of jobs at uh, in fact yeah. just in india more than 50% of the uh, jobs are created by uh, msmes as per uh, right. my, uh, understanding of the yeah it also feels proud i feel uh, uh, the, fu- the the only thing that uh, wakes me up in the morning is because i have about uh, 17 other people yeah. who are also believing in what i believed in right uh, smart it was just a small thought in my brain but today 17 people are uh, working they're giving everything day in and day out for something that i believed in which that's the most exciting part of uh, what makes me get out of the bed every single day. So amazing. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much, uh, Blush. Uh, absolutely delight talking to you. And it's very I'm, nice uh, talking to you. And yeah, yeah we should uh, keep in touch. Uh, we'll try to get yeah. in touch. I'll also go through the of your, uh, uh, do share sure. me your work. And I'm excited about uh, what you are doing. Uh, it's definitely going to help 